Hi, welcome back to the Woodshop Nerdery. In this video, I'm going to talk about performance characteristics of my Shopsmith Mark 7, including quill shaft runout, operating temperatures, motor bog down, and vibration. While I was using the disc sander for my Hoosier step stool project, I noticed that the 12-inch sanding disc had a lot of wobble in it. Let me show you this clip in slow motion. On my old machine, I've had some vibration on the 12 inch sanding disc, but nothing like this. So that gave me a suspicion that my quill shaft might not be running true. After seeing all that wobble in the 12 inch sanding disc, I decided to check the run out with my digital dial indicator. Let's go ahead and measure to see if there's any run out. One point five, two, three, three point five, two point five, one, zero. So we're back. So I started on just above the taper, now we're back to just above the taper. Let me see if I can illustrate for you in slow speed what was happening with the 12 inch disc sander that prompted me to measure the run out on the quill. So I think you can see that the wood is touching only in this one third of the disc sort of touches here, but for the most part, this whole half of the disc isn't collecting any abrasive. So as you can see, there's some run out in my quill shaft. Now some of you may say that my quill shaft is bent. I don't think that's the case. I think there's something wrong with the bearings. They're either defective or not properly seated. One of the reasons I say that is because just after a few minutes of running the machine, I can measure temperatures up to 125 degrees using this infrared thermometer near that quill shaft. And there's nothing that I've done that really should have damaged the quill shaft. I did have some rough cuts with this router bit while making some mortises, but I don't think that should bend the quill shaft. I've, I've done this sort of thing on my Shopsmith Mark V and had some rough cuts while routing, but you know, that quill runs perfectly straight. So for comparison, I want to show you the run out on my old Shopsmith Mark V Model 510. About four years, five years ago, I don't know, I replaced all the bearings these are good quality NTN bearings made in the USA. These are good quality NTN bearings made in Japan. The reason I installed new bearings is because my headstock was getting very hot and I wanted it to run cooler. And I also wanted to see if I could address some run out problems with my quill shaft. Within the accuracy of this device, I'm measuring zero run out on this quill shaft. And again, it's a 31 year old quill shaft, two pieces, but with new bearings installed. And when I say new bearings, these bearings are five years old. Okay, next I'm gonna put the Mark 7 12 inch disc sander on this machine so I can demonstrate how the run out doesn't affect the disc sander on this machine. Okay, so obviously we have some small low spots here, and then 180 degrees of that, a low spot here. That could either be where the abrasive disc itself is varying thicknesses, or there could be a slight dish in the disc itself. But because I'm getting pretty much symmetrical wood debris collected all the way around, I think that's an indication that the shaft has very little run out. At any rate, this degree of run out is not going to work. So I contacted Shopsmith with my problem. There's one feature of the Shopsmith Mark 7 that I've not talked about yet, and that is their gold medal protection program, which includes a 90 day money back guarantee and a five year warranty. Shopsmith agreed that the run out was excessive and I began the process of getting a replacement quill. I now have that replacement installed and I'm ready to set a baseline measurement for run out on the new quill shaft. 
Okay, here we are. I've got the digital dial indicator set up in the same spot, and I'm going to do the same test. Okay, that's a full revolution. I could only measure a half of a thousandth of an inch run out on this. I'm gonna consider that zero run out because we could really only rely on the accuracy of this device so much. Very happy with that outcome. Now I'm anxious to look at what temperatures this headstock reaches. One way I can check the health of this new quill is to record its operating temperature. So while recording the vibration measurements, which I'll go over in a few minutes, I also recorded temperatures. The duration of this test was about 26 minutes. I ran the speed of the machine up in increments through 4700 RPMs and at about the 14 minute mark I began reducing the speed in increments down to 700 RPM. As you can see it's that middle drive spindle that gets the hottest. The area near the quill stayed quite cool and maxed out at 85 degrees. So that's a good sign those bearings are in good running shape. Now this long-term temperature test is much different from the long-term temperature test I did in an early video on my ShopSmith Mark V, but I still think it's informative. For the vibration and decibel measurements, I used the exact same methodology that I used to test my ShopSmith Mark V in an earlier video. The average frequencies between the Mark V and the Mark VII, which are represented by the red line and green line, are about the same. They're playing in the same range there. Where I see significant differences in the average acceleration between the Mark V, which is the blue line, and the Mark VII, which is the yellow line, you can see that the maximum accelerations for the Mark 7 are much lower. And that's pretty much the same picture for the supported measurements as well. And the machine decibel levels chart shows that the Mark 7 was between 5 and 10 decibels quieter at these same speeds as compared to the ShopSmith Mark 5. I also wanted to do some testing measuring how much the machine slowed down when making heavy rip cuts. So just like in the Mark V test, I glued up a sample blank and ran them through the machine. Now I didn't include Poplar this go round because I didn't have any on hand. Except this time I didn't have to use a separate tachometer and that's because the ShopSmith Mark 7 has the digital tachometer built right into the display. And as the chart shows, the ShopSmith Mark 7 didn't perform any better than my ShopSmith Mark V. Even though the motor is much more powerful and the torque is digitally controlled by the DVR system. And honestly I expected those results. And that's because of the blade. In the test I used the ShopSmith blade that came with my ShopSmith Mark 7. It's a thin kerf general purpose blade. And this type of blade just isn't well suited for deep rip cuts. And that has a lot to do with how closely the teeth are spaced together. So in one regard, it's not fair to compare the two numbers between the ShopSmith Mark V and the Mark VII for the ripping performance. And that's because the blades were just so different. But in another regard, it was fair to do the test the way I did it, because after all, that is the blade that came with the ShopSmith Mark VII, and the onboard computer for the ShopSmith has a heavy ripping setting. And I set up the machine for the rips using that selection from the onboard catalog. In a previous video, I demonstrated how the mechanical speed changing system worked on my old ShopSmith Mark V. The ShopSmith Mark VII is a completely different system. It's a DVR motor which changes speeds digitally, not mechanically. If I open up the access cover on the back of the machine, you can see instead of belts and pulleys, the warning label on a computer control box. And if I open up the belt cover, you can see that those conical sheaves are now gone and replaced by standard pulleys. DVR motor technology is becoming more and more popular and available on more and more types of tools such as lathes and drill presses. Well, that does it for this video. I hope to see you in the next one.